Hello, everyone. Hello, good evening. Hello, Hi, teacher. Good evening. How's everyone doing? Fine. I'm okay. Nice. <laughs> yeah, we just got out of work. Yeah, me too. A while ago, about a, a couple hours ago. <sighs> it's hard this time because I'm working out it and we have a lot of companies to see. <laughs> oh, I have, and you're closing the month almost. Yeah, right? we're closing this whole year. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's true because you're just like closing the fourth quarter, the last quarter, right, of the year? Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. But almost getting there. Almost done. January is almost over. <laughs> almost. <laughs> Almost, yeah, almost. <laughs> Getting there. All right. Let me start sharing the agenda for today while we wait for everyone to join. All right. Okay. Right now, we are only five people, but... I will give everyone a couple minutes so that they can join. Um, and meanwhile, we will review the agenda as a review of what we saw yesterday. We were looking into the proper intonation for questions. So that was pretty easy, just a pronunciation exercise, how questions, especially questions of choice. So do you prefer chocolate or vanilla, right? Do you like uh, dressing with pants or with skirts? So we have that intonation throughout the question. So when you are talking to someone else and you are not writing, I didn't have my camera yesterday, but I do today so I can do my little hand things. Um, so when you're talking to someone else, they know that it's a question. They can hear that it's a question since when we're talking to someone else, we don't see the question mark, right? We don't see the question mark. So we need to use intonation to let other people know that we are asking a question. So that's what we reviewed yesterday. We reviewed that the tone goes down and then it goes up or it goes up and then it goes down. And then we went uh, a little bit more into questions of choice with rather and would prefer. And we reviewed that the main difference when talking about rather and would prefer is that you use prefer to. I prefer to drink water than soda. And when using rather, we won't use two. We would say, I rather drink water than soda. So we use the base verb or the um, present form of the verb without any modification, right? So I would rather drink water and I would prefer to drink water. It's the same thing. It means exactly the same, but two different ways to say it. So, I see that we are 14 people now. I see 14 people. Hello, everyone. How is everyone doing? Hello. 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 Fine, thank you. Nice. Happy to hear that. Hi, hello, everyone. I have my camera today, so that's good. My Wi-Fi is back. That's cool. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. I was afraid yesterday that the like my my phone's internet was not gonna be enough because I was using my phone's network. I was like, oh man, this is not gonna be enough. Um, but it was, and I got to finish the class. And I even had a class after that one. I have another class after this one. I have a 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. class. Um, and I was able to deliver that class with my phone's internet. So my phone and internet's gone, but we had the class. So that's important. Um, all right. So hello, everyone. 
So for everyone that just joined, we were reviewing um, yesterday's topics. We reviewed proper intonation and rather and would prefer. We did the knowledge check. And today we will be doing a listening exercise also about rather and would prefer. And we will be doing some additional rather and would prefer exercises. This one, we'll be doing them together. I think uh, this is pretty simple, I would say, rather and would prefer the same thing, just two different ways to say it. Um, but I want to make sure that everyone feels comfortable to use it. Everyone feels confident to use it and to start um, pronunciating it, to start using it in your every day. So let's see. Before we start with today's exercises, I would like to know what questions you have about would, uh, would prefer and rather. Is there any question that you want to clarify? Or alternatively, I would like to know if there are any questions about section one or two. So remember that we need to be aligned and be doing, I know that there are people that are doing like um, future exercises and that's awesome, that's super great. Um, but we should all be working in section three. So if you are in section one or section two um, and you need help with a previous exercise that we've worked in the past, this is the moment to bring it up. We can review it, we can solve it, um, and then we can move on to today's exercises. So anyone, any questions about yesterday or the previous sections? Alguna pregunta no. que tengamos about no. anything? No, thank you. I have, I, no, no, teacher. I have a question about the pronunciation of constable because you yes. pronounce it like constable and my teacher pronounce it like comfortable. So I don't know which is the correct one. So um, as, as we've talked in the past before, right? So people all over the world have different accents. Um, I don't know if I shared this with you. I think I did, but I learned um, English with pretty much of a American and specifically California accent. So I said comfortable. Some people say comfortable or comfortable. Um, so both could be correct. Ambas podrían estar correctas. It just depends on what part of the world you're in. Because, <laughs> um, for example, if you're uh, listening to a British person, they might say comfortable, right? Or comfortable. And then you're talking to someone from the United States or the US and they will say comfortable. Or you're talking to someone from India and they will say like something like comfortable, right? So they're both correct. They're just different pronunciations. Y la manera más común o la más usual en la que lo van a escuchar is comfortable or comfortable. But ambas están correctas, diferentes pronunciaciones. Lo pueden escuchar de ambas maneras. Yes, I see. Bueno, first of all, uh, does that answer your question? Does that help? Yes, teacher, I got it. Excellent. All right. Then I see Francisco's hand. Yes, good evening. I have a question, okay. teacher. Yes. In the exercise 2.2, .2, I don't understand the difference when I use uh, has been and uh, is been. Uh, I don't know the uh, usually in different uh, tense uh, use. Uh, for example, is been or has been. Uh, I, I don't understand the difference. Okay, let's review. Let's go to exercise number 2.2. Um, I believe that you can see my screen, right? Can you see it? Yeah. Okay, so 2.2 
And um, which exercise specifically? One, yes. two. Which one would it be? Uh, so number one, number two, three, or four? Um, for example, it, when I did the exercise, uh, okay. er, uh, every exercise is wrong for me because uh, the confused the has been and is been. Uh, uh, I don't understand when I use the different. Yes, has been. It's been. And, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So this one does not exist. Okay. Um, uh, so we say we we can say it's been, and here. It means it has. In the case, teacher is uh, uh, the verb and uh, being as a B E I A G. In. Oh, being. Mm -hmm. Being. Oh, so like is being? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So when you talk about that, you could see that in a sentence like this one. The trees or the environment. You're in advanced class. You know what the environment is. The environment is being damaged by pollution. Car, uh. by, by, yeah, by pollution. That works. Okay. So this is what you mean, right? When we're talking about is being? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we say this, we are talking about is the environment is being damaged. So we say subject plus the verb to be, the environment is it. It is being damaged, right? Okay. It's and active. It's active tense. It's a passive tense. Passive tense. Okay. Yes. So, a verb to be plus being damaged. What type of um, tense would this be? Infinitive or past participle that we would be using? Damage. Yeah, so part, part if we're using past participle, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we use that verb, past participle, and the complement, right? If yeah. we were to use the active voice, pollution is damaging the environment, damaging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So when we're talking about has been, this is also being used um, as a tense. So the, or let's say pollution has been uh, damaging the environment, right? So okay. it has been through time. Con el tiempo, it has been damaging the environment. When mm -hmm. we say, the environment is being damaged, decimos que está siendo dañado, not in mm -hmm. any specific ah, moment okay. in time, right? Okay, okay. It, the, 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 the look is time. Yeah. So when we use it has been damaging, we're talking about the um, past participle as a tense. So it has been. Right? Mm -hmm. Ha venido dañando, ha estado dañando. Sí. And when we say the environment is being damaged, está siendo dañado. Right when, now. When did it start? We don't know. Okay. When will it stop? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Anderson, thank you very much. Awesome. Okay. Any other questions with this? Sorry. Has been, ha venido dañando. Yeah, or. It, it's a process. Uh, it's a process. Uh, a long time ago, mm -hmm. when you used, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. It, uh, is it being damaged by pollution? 
and the, is being damaged. Son los ejercicios que nosotros estuvimos revisando about the past participle. Yeah, yes, yeah? yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. So when we're talking about has been, um, les voy a compartir otra pantalla. I'm sorry about the noise. When we're talking about has been, I have been, then we're going into the past. I don't know if you already reviewed this, but this is past perfect or oh, el past. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, no. Um, Oh my God, porque past per, uh, primero aclárenme algo, ya vieron past perfect, past continuous, have we, have you reviewed that before, o no lo hemos visto aún? Alguien que me sepa decir? At, the, at this point, we should know that, I think. Okay, so, because I want to know, um, porque eso entramos en past perfect o present perfect, present perfect continuous. ¿Alguien que recuerde si ya vieron esos tiempos? I think we already did. Ok. Yeah. Vaya. Entonces sí, porque así nos, lo, solo lo, lo revisamos un poquito. So, this is, I didn't have this in your folder. I have folder with everything that we would be reviewing for the class but como I don't have this in your topics I didn't have it handy but here we go veo la mano de Alma to the bunny how can I help yes uh, because I never see the past perfect just the present perfect but no the past perfect okay, I don't know that's good Okay. No worries, that's good. Um, I just wanted to know if you had gone through the perfect tenses, past perfect, present perfect, um, there's even future perfect. So um, specifically for Alex, Alexander's question, that is present perfect continues. So we're talking about, I have been waiting, I have not been doing, I have been, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about perfect tenses when we use um, this is a negative example, but um, mm -hmm. when we use the subject plus have or haven't, si es negativo, plus yes. been, and then I have been waiting. Right. I have been, um, ah, ya no tengo el ejemplo que tenía, but mm -hmm. I have been, right? Or mm -hmm. just present perfect. Solo present perfect, I have uh, been, uh, present perfect continuous, I haven't been, I have been eating. And then if we go into past uh, perfect, pero creo que eso no lo, no lo han visto aún por lo que me comentan, entonces ya sería I had been, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Pero para el ejemplo que nos decía Francisco, él nos decía is being versus has been, Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. No, that's where we. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Yeah. That's where we take it from, like the perfect tenses, past perfect, present perfect, continuous, mm -hmm. etc. Pero that's a different topic, yeah. And mm -hmm. okay, yeah. is been esto sí no existe. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Any other questions so far? Um about what we've seen so far um, in terms of the first sections questions or the vocabulary that we've seen so far, the topics that we saw yesterday or today? Not right now, maybe in two weeks. No, 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 okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, all right, but that's good. That was a good exercise. This is a different, Tense, es un tense completamente distinto. So maybe don't get stuck with this porque this is not what we're reviewing right now. But this was just an example taken off of what of Francisco's question. Um, but we are not reviewing this right now. Okay. All right. Okay. So we are going back into um, 
would rather and would prefer to. And we'll be doing some exercises. I have 10 exercises here that we can do. And then we will move on to the listening exercise and we'll review by plus gerund. So we will learn how to use by and gerunds. For example, by uh, getting up early and how to use it to explain solutions or to explain processes. So we'll start our day by doing some exercises. Mm -hmm. Creo estamos 19 people. So I'll just choose randomly okay. and you can participate if you want to. So what we want to do, we have the questions. I will be asking you the question and you can answer. So which would you prefer to be, a songwriter or a singer? And you can answer using the same structure. I would prefer to, or I would rather, right? Okay. Recordemos que you can use both. Aquí puede decir prefer to be, or rather. but you can also answer with rather, whatever you feel the most comfortable with, remembering the rules, All right? Yes. Okay. So we will start with, let's see, let's see, let's, see. let's start with Marcela. Are you here? Yes. Hi, Hi Marcela. So which would you prefer to be, a songwriter or a singer? I will prefer to be a singer. Nice. Thank you, Marcela. Being a singer sounds fun. Yes. What's your question? Uh, can we change the auxiliar will for other? The auxiliar what? I'm sorry. Uh, will. So, um, not really for this exercise because mm -hmm. that's um grammar, right? So, for ex what would you, what would you say instead of would, for example? For example, what? Cool. For example. Um, I'm sorry. You said what? You said to change she it says, for what? She says cool, but I, I think oh. no. C O U M D. Yeah. So no, not really. Mm -hmm. Um, and the mm -hmm. reason, the reason we can't, is because I'm not asking if you could, like. I mean, I'm sure you could. Mm -hmm. como cuando, es como cuando nos preguntan, um, ¿puedo ir al baño? Y nos contestan, de poder, puedes, mm -hmm. So, I'm not asking if you could, because you probably could, but what would you prefer, right? Um, what would you like? What would you, I'm not asking if you can or you can't. I'm just asking what you would prefer, right? So, mm -hmm. You could <laughs> change it. It just, it wouldn't make sense and people wouldn't understand. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, okay. And with, do you prefer? So, for example, if I am um, asking someone, do you prefer ice cream or a milkshake? What would you want to say instead? Would you want to use could or would? Or what would you like to do instead of do you? Just, I prefer ice cream. Ah, yeah, prefer that's perfect. Ice that's too. excellent. You could say, I prefer ice cream. No, right? I prefer two. Why am I not using a D? Uh, why am I not using uh, two? Because yes, I don't yes, have because I am using I. <laughs> yes, yes, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but you yes. could say, I prefer, do you prefer to eat? Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, the only time I'm going to use two is when 
there's a verb after that but if there's not i could say do you prefer um cold or hot drinks right so if it's a noun you don't need to put two before it okay okay Teacher, yo recuerdo que en alguna oportunidad yo vi no sé si me acuerdo mal okay. que uno también que uno también decía i prefer something rather than something Yes, that is correct. So if you want to give more information or you want to do a comparison or just a longer answer, right? You could say that, that that's excellent. I can say, I prefer ice cream rather than, and then this is the keyword for comparisons. I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. que lo vieron cuando vieron comparisons. So, um, I prefer ice cream rather than milkshakes, which I don't know why you would, but fine, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I prefer ice cream rather than milkshakes. That's correct. You could say that. Mm -hmm. Which is the function of rather in that case? The function of rather is to do a comparison. I prefer ice cream rather than milkshakes. Because if we just say then, I prefer ice cream than milkshakes. Okay, but there is a gap. Grammaticamente no es correcto. I need to have a comparison word. So rather than milkshakes. No así cuando estamos hablando de adjetivos. We're talking about nouns here. But when we're talking about adjectives, I can say I am taller than you. Sin necesidad de una comparison word. Porque these are, this is an adjective. And the comparison here, la comparación aquí es taller, más alto mm -hmm. que. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Nice. Okay, good. If it doesn't, yes. please let me know, porque así les puedo explicarlo un poquito más, right? All right. So that's, those are additional rules. So when we're talking about nouns, I prefer it. Um, anything over uh, or rather than anything. Mm -hmm. Otra manera de hacer otra comparison is I prefer, saliéndonos del tema un poquito, right? I prefer ice cream okay. over milkshakes. Oh. Yeah, this is also a way to compare. I prefer um, coffee over chocolate. I prefer soda over juice, so. And this is actually a very common way to compare. Okay. Otra cosa que les iba a decir es que um, ahorita estamos haciendo estos ejercicios to practice grammar, to practice um, the topics and to make sure that you understand. Um, pero para que no se extrañen, in real life, <laughs> um, in real mm -hmm, life mm -hmm. or in a real situation, uh -huh. If someone asks you, um, would you prefer to be a songwriter or a singer? En una conversación común entre cheros, digamos, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sería muy común que yo solo le contestara a songwriter. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't need to say, I would prefer to be a singer. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I want to I mm -hmm. be a singer. Yeah. I, would, I would prefer mm -hmm. to be a singer. I'd prefer a singer. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, these are grammar rules and it's very important that you know it. Um, pero no se extrañen si lo escuchan de una manera más casual. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Okay. Excellent questions yes. today. Any other questions before we continue? Okay. Let's do another example. Then can I have your okay. help, Alexander, with number two? Would you prefer to be able to fly or to become invisible for a day? I would prefer to be to fly. To be able to fly. Yeah. All right, that's cool. Yes. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, me too, I think. All right. Yeah. Thank and you. I like it when I, when I, how do you say, when I sueño, you, that I, I can fly. Oh, I like Oh, it. when you really dream like about it? it? <laughs> yes. So yeah, many times. Cool. And I, I like to enjoy that 
Yeah. Enjoy the feeling. Why not invisible? Why not invisible? Uh, uh, invisible? Not because uh, I don't know. Maybe just for that uh, to do a joke. <laughs> I don't know. Because but you I must make it on the street. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know, I know. But but I prefer fly. I don't know. I feel good. I, I don't know. I, I know. I don't know how to explain, but I feel really, like Superman. really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's super cool. Uh, how do you say vertigo? You can say that you get dizzy, we get mareado, or you could also say, um, what's the specific word for vertigo? So, like the casual maybe, way you would say that I get to see, yeah. Or maybe when people, some some people when they are on the top, for example, on the top of mm -hmm. hotel, yeah, they can see uh, after or down. They can because feel like a yeah. In your body, like they a, feel sick. Uh -huh. But you know what? Leymar has uh -huh. an excellent question. So I don't know like the casual way to say it. Like I would say if I'm a in a very high place, I would say that, um, or mm -hmm. I guess she's talking about flying, that she would get dizzy or that she would get, like mm -hmm. she would feel sick. But let's look for the exact meaning of vertigo translation. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see, vertigo to English. Oh, it's the same, it's vertigo. I feel vertigo. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. So it's the same. Mm -hmm. See? Yes. You get vertigo. So it's the same word. I would say dizzy, mm -hmm. usually. Like this one that we see here. How do you describe the dizziness that you feel before fainting? So dizzy, mm -hmm. I would say. If not, Apparently, vertigo is the word. Mm -hmm. I love this page. I'll send this link to you. Lingui. Be Lingui yes. Com. Yeah, it's okay. called Lingui. I like it because it gives you examples of how to use words in sentences. So you know the right way to say the words uh, in, in which scenarios. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. All right. So vertigo, it is. You could also say it's a different word, right? To feel like you want to vomit or puke, mm -hmm. to, you have nausea or nausea, same thing. So vertigo, nausea, dizziness. Good question. All right. Let's do another one. Let's do number. Let me do this let's do number three, three. um Richard, yes what, what is the meaning of plunge because yesterday i remember that listen that word uh, it was something like i'm ready to get the plunge or something like that get lunch plunge come with p P L U N C H. Plunge. Yes. Take the plunge. Yesterday we saw that yesterday. Uh, yes, when we saw the video about tango. Oh, about tango. I really don't know. Let's review. Remember that I told you that I would be learning with you too. All mm -hmm. right. So it says. I decided to take the plunge. So I decided to take, oh, it's kind of like leap to take the jump, right? Okay. Yeah. A quick plunge. Mm -hmm. So to throw yourself or to do a jump or to do a, a leap, right? Mm -hmm. That's plunge. Excellent question. You could say, I mean, if we are using take the plunge and it's kind of like take the jump, Respondiendo a la pregunta de Leymar en el chat. Um, 
So if you could say take the plunge, just like take a take a leap, take a jump, atreverse, or literally take the plunge as in jumping, right? Mm -hmm. That depends if you're using it as an expression or literally. Okay, now we do number three. Okay, let's do number three, please. Roberto. Would you rather go on holidays to the Sahara Desert or to the Arctic Circle? I would rather go to the Arctic Circle. <laughs> That's fun. They're both cool, right? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. They're both cool. I prefer the cold too. I do prefer the cold. Wow, but yeah. Arctic Circle? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Super extreme. Yeah. Okay, let's do number four. Uh, let's see, number four, please. Gabby. Um, okay, number four says, would you prefer to be a racing car driver or a bus driver, a jockey or a taxi driver? Um, I would prefer to be a racing car driver. Nice. Are you like free or thing? <laughs> nice. All right. What about number five, please, Marvin? Uh, which number? A uh, number five, please. Number five. Which would you rather be a uh, food? A footballer or a footballer manager? I would prefer to be a football manager. Nice. All right. <laughs> Getting paid like the manager. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Teacher, and if you are not agree with uh, none of the, 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 the choice? Okay. So, excellent question. If I don't like any of the choices, I can say I would rather none. I can say, como dijimos, en una situación very casual, I could just say mm -hmm. none. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I would prefer none. Or if it's uh, an example about doing, so would you prefer to... Um, to fly or to be invisible, I would prefer not to, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Say neither, Thank you. teacher. Yeah, you could also say neither if you want to use that word. Okay. Yeah, that's correct as well. And if you are fine with any, if you don't care, um, for example, if you don't care about being a footballer or a football manager, uh, you could also add answer with either. Either is fine. Either is fine. Or I like both. If you can't decide between oh, um, mm -hmm. the Sahara mm -hmm. Desert or the Arctic Circle, I like both. These are all valid. Those are okay. What is Jockey. Jockey is a type of driver as well. So a racing car driver, a bus driver, these are all uh, different words for drivers. And this is how do you say that in Spanish? A jockey. Let me show you. I just, I want to make sure this is a safe search. It's a, for it's sure, it's not joker. No. <laughs> It's no joker. So, yeah, this is a jockey. Los jinetes. Jinete? Is that the word? Jinete? This is a jockey. Okay. So, not really like a. Mm, yeah, it's it, the word is driver because they're like guiding it, but not really a driver. Is the word jinete? Is it a palabra? Is jinete the word? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah, yes, we don't see that really, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a jockey. 
So a bus driver, a jockey or a track star, I really, it sounds like a jockey, like it doesn't belong there, right? But mm -hmm. all right, mm -hmm. that's a jockey. Okay. So we did number five. Let's do number six, please. Uh, Ivania. Uh, would you prefer to gain or lose 16, I don't know, how do you say, kilos? Yeah, kilos. 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 Uh, obviously, I prefer to lose 16. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank oh, you so right. much, Ivania. <laughs> All right. Let's do number seven, Maritza, if you're here. Ooh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where would you rather spend the weekend? In London, Paris, or Rome? I would I would rather to spend I would rather spend the weekend on in, in Paris. In Paris. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm actually going to Paris in at the end of the year. So um, that's exciting. Uh, <laughs> it's super exciting all right you, you were or the next year you this you year paris. this oh, year this year going to paris this ah, year yeah. okay at the end uh yeah by november mm. around november yes yes congratulations Ooh. yeah thank you <laughs> yeah. all right can i please have katya do number eight would you uh, Could I have a monkey, a snake, a dolphin, or a spider for a pet? I would rather mm -hmm. have a monkey. <laughs> a monkey is fun. Yeah, I, a snake? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, snakes dangerous. Well, I mean, they're not that bad, but they're dangerous, though. Yeah. Uh, okay, can I please have, let's see, let's see, let's see. Can I have Ana Godinez do number nine? Okay. Would you rather be a musician or a painter? Um, I would rather be a, a painter. Nice, artsy. Okay, a painter. That requires yeah. lots of talent. Okay. Mm -hmm. And finally, can we do number 10, please, Juan Jose? <clears throat> okay. Uh, which would you prefer to study? Medicine, art, languages, or science? Languages. Uh, I, will, <laughs> I would rather um, to study art. Art. That's interesting. That's excellent. Thank you so much, Juan Jose. I love art. I think art is great. Mm -hmm. I would like to study art too. <laughs> All right. So we went over some exercises to reinforce rather than would prefer. And now we will do a second exercise, but this is a listening exercise. So I'll pop out this um, audio. We will listen to it and we'll be solving the exercises. We have three different examples for Linda, for Rich, and for Wen. So we will listen to each of them and check the answers. So here it goes. Listen to three people talk about the part-time courses they took recently. What course did each person take? One, Linda. So Linda, what have you been doing with yourself? Not much. Oh, wait, that's not true. I took this great dancing class last semester. Oh, yeah? What kind of dancing? We learned African dance and samba. Wait, why would you want to learn African dance and samba? It sounds exhausting, and it's not like you would dance that way in the clubs. Oh, just for fun. You should try taking the class. You'll see that you learn more than just dancing. You also learn how to be more confident and how to interact better with other people. Hmm. I think with all that dancing around, I'd be too exhausted to interact with anyone. Two, Rich. 
So, how did you enjoy your cooking course? It was. So, before we start with bridge, what did Linda learn? Nice. And do you think that sounds tiring as well? The second one is vegetarian cooking. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Let's listen. Let's see if it's true. It's great. What kinds of things did you learn to cook? Well, it was a course on vegetarian cooking. That's I true. I didn't know you were a vegetarian. Oh, I'm not. But a lot of people are these days. So I thought it would be useful to know how to make some interesting dishes without meat for times when I invite friends over for dinner. Hmm. Well, I guess that makes sense. Oh, but we learn more than just cooking. They also taught us all kinds of useful things about, you know, the health value of different kinds of vegetables and how to prepare them so that you don't remove all the vitamins they contain. So, uh, when's dinner? Three, Gwen. So was it vegetarian cooking? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Vegetarian, yeah, vegetarian cooking. Cooking. Vegetarian cooking is good. It's good. All right. Number yeah. three. Yeah, it's good, right? Yes, it's good, but the meat is good, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it feels like something's missing, but it's good. <laughs> I just got my grade in the mail. I got an A. Wow, that's terrific. Congratulations. What kind of course was it? It was a course on how to open and run a small business. Oh, did it help? Yes, absolutely. We learned a lot of general principles and a lot about finance. Even if I don't open a business, I learned a lot about investing and managing money. Great. Can you manage my money? My finances are a mess. So he needs help, right? So what did Wen learn? First one, how to run a small business. How to run a small business. How to run a small business. Sounds like she's doing good. What? Venga. Oh, OK. Not here. OK, let's no, review no. the answers. <laughs> And you are correct. So Linda learned about African dance and samba. She learned how to dance to that. Uh, Rich learned about vegetarian cooking to keep the nutrients in the food. And when learned, and it's it's going is she's going through a course about how to run a small business. So that's interesting. All right. Any yes. uh, what questions do you have about this? Are there any questions? Uh, the how to run a uh, small business, I, I, everything about that. But uh, at the beginning, I don't understand what it means. But this is like an administrator of a small business. Is how to run is expression. Uh, how to run a small business? Mm -hmm. how, yeah, to, so, uh, how to yeah, run is an expression. It's an expression. Yeah. But it means is how to like uh, administer, uh, manage the small business. Exactly, how to manage the small mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So, mm -hmm. as we go into the following lesson, and remember, now that you, we've reviewed these exercises, you can work on them. Uh, doesn't need to be right now, but remember that it's best that we go hand in hand working on the same exercises or that you are already working on section three so that your platform is getting completed, right? So that being said, <laughs> that disclaimer thrown out there, um, as we go into the following lesson, we are going into the next topic that we reviewed um, in our agenda, which is buy plus gerund. And as I was telling you, uh, we will review how to use this expression buy plus any gerund to explain a solution or to talk about how something's happened or what happens um, in order for something else to happen. So we are going to watch a video on that.
Hello, sometimes learning a language might be stressful, but you could improve by listening to music or by watching movies. Let's pay attention to the advice given and the following conversation. They might work for you too. So, how's your French class going? Not bad, but I'm finding the pronunciation difficult. Well, it takes a while to get it right. You could improve your accent by listening to language CDs. That's a good idea. But how do you learn new vocabulary? I always seem to forget new words. I learn new English words best by writing them on pieces of paper and sticking them on things in my room. I look at them every night before I go to sleep. Hmm, maybe I should try something like that. Listen to two other people explain how they learn new words in a foreign language. What techniques do they use? One. I keep a record of new words I come across. Then I make up study cards. I write the word on one side of the card and the meaning on the other side. Oh, and I always include at least one sentence with a word in it. Then I go through the cards whenever I have some spare time like when I'm waiting for my laundry to dry or on the bus, and study the words until I know them by heart. Every week or so, I organize the cards into categories. You know I put all the words together that have to do with food or work or home or school, whatever I can find that my new words have in common. 2. I keep a vocabulary notebook. It's organized alphabetically. Whenever I hear or read a new word, I write it down. Then when I have time, I look it up in my dictionary. Then I put down some key information about the word. You know, whether it's a noun or a verb, and some examples of how it's used. I go through the notebook and study the words as often as I can. I really believe that the only way to learn new words, even in your own language, is by memorizing them. So, different techniques in each conversation, right? They are following different techniques. But let's go back to the initial conversation and locate this form. Speaking, which is by, whoops, sorry, by plus Jaron. Where can you see that in this conversation? By listening. By listening, that's right. Let me outline that. Where else? Mm -hmm. by, writing. by writing. By writing. By writing them on pieces of paper. Writing. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So as you can see, this is a way to explain how to do something or solutioning. This is not the only way that you can express this idea. Let's review more examples. So I can say that I improve my English by practicing every day. But I can also say, también puedo decir, I practice every day to improve. English. And it means the same, right? Significa lo mismo. It's a different way to say it. Um, this is a little bit more fo formal. Un poco más formal. It's, it's, not, oh, it's not very, very formal, but this is more casual. I practice every day to improve my English. So someone can ask you, uh, how do you improve your English? I practice every day. You could say that. How do you ah, improve your English? And I can answer with I practice every day. I can answer by saying I practice every day to improve. My, if you want to do a, like a, the long answer, you can also say this way. 
the same answer in a different order. No les afecta, solo estamos aprendiendo en este momento, en este momento, how to use this specific form. I improve my English by practicing every day, right? I can also answer just by practicing every mm -hmm. day. You could say that as well. In more, more casually, just practicing? Practicing. That's a correct answer as well. Mm -hmm. How do you improve your English? Practicing, practicing. or practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even more casual. Excellent. Yeah. Do you have any questions with this part right here? By plus Gerald? No. No question. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. Okay. Let me stop this share and go back to our other screen right here okay so right after that um right after going into by plus gerund i would like for us to do a little bit more practice so let me give you another example mm -mm -mm -mm. we will do you know what let's do word again. Why don't you give me an example? ¿Quién quiere participar? Who wants to give me an example using by plus gerund? Cualquier oración, whatever you want to say. Teacher, I have a question. Yes. Uh, it's not precisely um, an example, uh, but it's um, uh, just a question. Yeah. For example, what's the difference when you use uh, the, the word by in this case, uh, to to refers to uh, uh, a reason okay. or, or or an effect mm -hmm. from something, mm -hmm. and when you use it, for example, in a phrasal verb, I don't, I'm not sure if if is that correct uh, form, passing by, passing by, like this one, passing by. Yeah. Like like um like a passenger passenger passing by like this one? Uh, maybe it could be. So um this if we say passing by we're talking a little bit more about an expression. Um if we say a passenger that's passing by or a car passing by we are saying que está pasando, right? It's going right there in front of me. It's passing by or it's passing by me. Pasando enfrente de mí o a la par, or passing by me, somewhere around me. Mm -hmm. um, and then we use by to explain a reason or to explain an effect. So by uh, practicing, I improve by reading books, by listening to music, right? And this is an expression. <laughs> but you mentioned uh, phrasal verbs. Where else have you seen by being used or in which example? <laughs> ¿En qué otro ejemplo podríamos? So, just so we understand. When will we see the first of the verse, teacher? For me, those are so complicated. You feel like you uh, need uh, uh, more information on phrasal verbs? I think those are complicated because the one have three or four or five meanings and, and some ones have a specific moment uh, to use it. Yeah, that's true. They have some rules around phrasal verbs and how they need to be used and what's best, when's best to use it or to use them. So uh, phrasal verbs, we have them for next week. But um, what I can do, lo que puedo hacer, so that we can start reviewing some examples and we can start practicing, is that I can send um, a review of phrasal verbs over to WhatsApp para que ustedes lo tengan como material. We can start reviewing those maybe before we get to mm -hmm. that section, uh, which we will review Tuesday next week. And that way, we can start building the conversation about phrasal mm -hmm. verbs because I know it has a couple of rules and we can get 
to reviewing it on Tuesday. Does that sound okay? Yes. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. I see Francisco, your hand is up. Yes. Yes, teacher, I have a question. Uh, yes. I need the link for WhatsApp chat. Oh, yeah, no <laughs> problem. <laughs> Absolutely. So whoever needs the link for the class, let me get that to you right now. Se los voy a pasar para quien no lo tenga. Se los voy a pasar en este momento aquí al chat de Zoom para que puedan unirse. Here it is. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you for letting me know. Here you go. Here it is. You can join there. Y super bueno, ahí les voy a estar pasando más material. So I'll send some um, examples on phrasal verbs, on rules about phrasal verbs, so that you can start reviewing it. And by the time we talk about it on Tuesday, we're a little bit more ready. Okay. Awesome. Okay. All right. So I know it's almost nine. It's it's nine. It's already nine. Okay. The clock's ticking. So, but we were <laughs> able to review by plus gerund, which was uh, mm -hmm. a super cool way to review solutions and how to ex uh, provide some explanations. So we'll do some exercises on that tomorrow. Continue practicing, and we'll move on to the next section. So have a good night, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Good night. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. 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 bye.